tables. Working towards implementation of Plan Change 6, uh, which is on page 59, and I think thank, we... Thank you, Chair. I'll just... Um, Nathan, he's down the back. I'll get Nathan, Nathan to there? come up to the table. He thought he was going to sit down the back there and not have to do anything, but may well, you may well uh, want, want to ask questions of him. So just a reminder that this item actually went to the Regional Planning Committee. Um, it was fully presented to the Regional Planning Committee and we're not proposing to repeat that presentation because it was about three quarters of an hour of it. I don't think you'd want to go through that twice. Um, but part way through that presentation we lost the quorum and so they, they couldn't make any decisions around it. Um, and and there, was, there was general agreement, although not a formal resolution of the committee, that this item could be brought directly to the Council for adoption. And I guess the reason why there was some comfort in that is that this, price, this, this document is not a statutory document. As the paper outlines, this is, this is our working towards, it's our direction of travel document, it's what we're intending to do and how we're intending to do it after uh, um, extensive uh, working up by staff and engagement with um, Cam Drury who wrote it and, and also road testing with um, stakeholders and partners. Um, but, but what we're looking for is for you to adopt this and allow us to safely continue that journey, um, i.e. carry on the work which is already occurring and that work that's already occurring was also presented to the Regional Planning Committee from Nathan and his team, um, knowing that we are going in a direction that people are comfortable with. Bearing in mind that the policy requires that we do bring back a formal implementation plan uh, uh, soon. This, this document's going to be the framework or the basis on which that's built and that formal implementation plan uh, is a more formal document um, but that will come to you in time. So like I say we've, we're not proposing to run a, a repeat of the presentation. Happy to answer any questions that you didn't get the chance to ask uh, at the Regional Planning Committee otherwise looking for your um, endorsement to carry on. So do you wish to add anything? To that you're happy just to take questions yeah okay so questions any questions councillor graham this is a weird question but how on earth are you going to cope with this with your staff and resources that you've got <coughs> just a two-line answer can you cope without additional resources it's certainly a big job and no we can't not without additional resources going forward um, it's a cross organizational effort so it's, this is this is a, a group of representatives from across the organization it's not just land management um, and we're also working closely with the primary sector and a number of others so it, it's, it's more than land management it's it's an organizational approach but I'd take your point no we, given the resourcing that we've got we're going to really struggle going forward to so ramp this up perhaps just to add to that because it's a really um, live and valid point councillor is that the reason we want to get some some endorsement of what we're doing and where we're going is that this is going to build on the detail we'll bring back to you in the long-term plan discussion or to the to the council in the long-term plan discussion to say if we want to do all this stuff here's what we need to do it um, so we'll be bringing that back to you yeah. councillor hewitt thank you thanks for not repeating the presentation <laughs> given given that um, you're really challenged nathan with your resources did this actual process add any value to what you're doing? And I ask this quite genuinely because we had people getting up and walking out. Yes, it did. It put everything, it consolidated all the bits of work that are actually required as part of the, you know, delivering on the policy and the rules and the regulations and put it in one place. And so it, it does, uh, to me, outline the, the magnitude of the task at hand. Uh, it's, there, there are things in here that we have to do, there are things in here that we're actively doing right now. So in terms of documenting everything that's on the go, it certainly served that purpose. Councillor, the other, the other point I'd make around that is that given the effort we've put into getting this to this level, we, we, the, the effort to produce the, more, the formal implementation plan will be a lot less because we've largely done the work. Yeah. Uh, Mr Mohi. Yeah, just um, in terms of the package that um, Tamatea Taifenua has signed, um, I'm, I'm just aware that if indeed you're under-resourced, we will be hugely under-resourced. And so we need to be looking at getting those resources at the same time as your 
planning them. Would you say that was true? Yes, and, and I was talking to Dr Marker not too long ago about the, the need to catch up with each other and have a bit of a yarn around what is going on and, and to synchronise our efforts. Yeah, but I'm just mindful that he's getting older each year and it's going to be difficult. <laughs> and you're not. <laughs> Other questions? Thank you, Mr Mohi. Other questions? You happy to move? Thank you. Have a second. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barker. You wish to speak? I do, um, Nathan. Yeah, I, mean, I think your crew do an absolutely incredible job. You know, you're out there. This is just such a huge undertaking that seems to have fallen into your lap, and it's such a crucial undertaking. Mm -hmm. And it's a template for um, how we're going to go forward and how much of New Zealand's going to go forward. Um, so, um, you know, I'll I, I'll be a backer in terms of um, resourcing you up because um, first of all, we have a we have to do it. Mr Maxwell's nodding away there. But not just have to, we need to do this. We absolutely need to do this and do it well. So I just want you to, um, I think most of the people around this table um, agree with me on this and you should congratulate your team. And we know they're stretched but and doing their best, but we need to be there for you in the next term. Second. I, I second uh, <clears throat> support everything that Rex has said on this. On the second, on the other part of this too, <coughs> which I think we need to accept, <clears throat> is that having set out Plan Change 6, there isn't a manual set aside to do it and all the extra resources, not a go to. There's not a YouTube video you can go and check it up on. And I think we just need to accept that we're going to have to, by and large, make it up as we go, which is what your report says to us that we are, are going to have to be flexible here. <clears throat> and with that, uh, there's no doubt that we're going to get many things right, but also going to get some things wrong. And the object of our exercise here is not get involved in a point and blame game where things go wrong. Just accept that there's, this is a path we have to tread for the first time. We will not get things right every on occasion, but we're going to do this with the best will in the world and the best attempt to make sure to, to do everything right on every occasion. And if that happens, fantastic, it'll be the first time in human history. Uh, but if we follow the course, normally there will be some things. And let's just have a try and develop a forgiving, uh, resolving, getting on with it uh, environment. And, uh, and Rex has made the point, this council will support your team as much as they can. So I just think that's the theme we have to have with this. And I thank you for the, the very fine effort you've put into this. This will be an iterative process and we just need to keep talking about it. So thank you, Heath. Great. Uh, Councillor Belford. Yeah, I would love to get to the point where this uh, council was criticised for over-investing uh, in, in this particular area. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, uh, beyond what we must do, uh, what we should aspire to do in this area, I think uh, Councillor Bevan raised it in the RPC meeting that these farm plans and so forth that are at the key of this to offer uh, you know, significant opportunity over and above uh, compliance uh, to improve uh, farming practices uh, in this catchment. Uh, the media world is about to be barraged with photographs of what's going on in the in the catchment now with uh, feedlots and so forth in uh, Councillor uh, uh, Hewitt's area, uh, and people will be pretty disgusted uh, by what they see. Uh, and it's going to put pressure on on this whole process, uh, not just from the sort of academics of are we complying with Tuki Tuki Plan Change 6, but do we have any handle at all uh, on what's going on in terms of farming practices in this catchment. So uh, you can't have enough resources as far as I'm concerned in this area, and uh, I will strongly support you. Other speakers? Summing up? No? Put the motion in. All those in favour, please say aye. On the contrary, no. Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Heath. Okay. Uh, Waipatiki Holiday Park. And that's me, Mr Chairman. Oh, we finally get to hear from Mr Aidy. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as you're aware, you, uh, as part of your annual plan deliberation, set aside $300,000 for contributing towards the purchase of the Waipatiki Holiday Park. Um, that has progressed. Um,
And in fact, I had a meeting with Hastings District Council um, probably a week ago, and they said, why don't Hawke's Bay Regional Council become the owner? So this paper is brought together over a very short time, and I've done what due diligence I can in the process. Um, but yeah, to be fair, um, there are a couple of risk areas, and I, I, I see, and I will raise those um, as part of this. But um, you know, for, from the the background is that Hastings have done a lot of negotiating with the current owner. Um, the Holiday Park itself is leased to a separate person for or a separate organisation for 21 years, and that lease was signed in. 2010, so it, it runs through till 2031, I think, from memory. Um, so does council wish to be the owner? I think we've agreed um, that there should be a, an ownership structure. Um, are HBRC willing to take over that role? So just working it through, we, we the, the sale and purchase agreement needs to go unconditional tomorrow. Um, and so that we, we need to be clear on who the owner is or will be. The wastewater system, the due diligence, there are some issues associated with that, but Hastings District Council have committed themselves to undertaking any work necessary to uh, bring it up to spec, or if the investment is not going to make sense to connect it into the community system associated with Waipariki. The other side of the, uh, so that's that covered, and the only other issue are the buildings. I have not had the opportunity or the chance to actually do an independent assessment of the buildings and the state of the buildings and whether they comply fully with resource consents. Um, or building consents that have been, uh, are in place. However, um, the responsibility for maintaining buildings to the standard is, sits with the lessee. Um, and in addition, they are also required to comply with the Camping Act, I think it is, I can't remember what it, exactly it is, uh, and to achieve that they need to have annual assessments of their facilities. Now I've seen the last two reports of those assessments um, and they come through saying that it is a very well managed um, operation. So that's as far as I have been able to, to work through the, the uh, building issue associated with that due diligence. So I'm not in a position to say we're 100% risk free on that. There could be some work that needs to be done. However, um, in my view, we should be able to work with the leasee um, and with the annual income through that process. Um, the current lease brings in 31,000, I think, and that's due for renewal in November. Uh, and in addition to that, there is a 10% a additional charge on that lease that is collected and that is that is utilized or available for capital works on the on the process on the on the property so relatively small um, but there is a bit of a question mark in my mind about um, that the liability associated with those buildings um, so I'll leave, I'll leave it to you to <laughs> ask any further questions if, if you have um, similar concerns or wish to quantify those any further and I, I'm not really in a position at this stage to quantify it. So other than that, I just um, leave it to you to ask questions and make a decision. Mm. Um, so the original deal was, um, I, if I recall, a million dollars uh, and it was three-way split. Um, I just want to be certain that the three partners are still in. Uh, it says here they are. Yes, there was 900,000 900, divide, divided by yeah, three. Right. Yes. So three partners are still in, 900,000 each, uh, 900,000 total, 300,000 yep. each. Um, so that is confirmed, the three partners, the equity partners are still in. 
That is confirmed with Napier City saying, yeah, yeah, yeah 300,000, yeah, no, we want no further yeah, involvement, fine. and Hastings and ourselves really working together as, as to where should the ownership okay. fit and where does the ongoing... Will there be two owners? Three. No, there will, there will be a single owner. There will be a single owner, and the proposal is that it is HBRC. <coughs> to, in order to achieve that, though, there will be contributions from three parties. Councillor Dick. Yeah, Mr Chairman, to Mike. Um, what is, I haven't been out there for a long, long time, I should have been. Um, what is the policy or terms of lease that govern um, occupation of sites by permanence or semi-permanence? Do you know? Um, in terms of campers. Campers. I have written down that, and there is um, one of the things they, if they are required to get the agreement of the owner, should they wish to sublease. So that really may puts the onus in our hands if they wish to sublease on a semi-permanent basis individual sites. Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll just make the comment that, um, I mean, a lot of camping grounds have uh, allocate some space for uh, permanence or semi-permanence, although the better ones are tending to phase, phase them out. Um, but some of the less well-managed camping grounds become a bit of a disgrace with old caravans, weeds growing around them and, and that sort of thing. Yeah, acknowledge that, but they are required to get the owner's permission to sublease, and that would... To sublease a site? To sublease but a presumably site. Presumably you'd be inheriting some leases? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. Mm. Uh, Councillor Bevan, then Councillor <coughs> Hewitt. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, you said that the lease was 31,000, I think. Is that 31,000 net of all outgoings, like rates, whatever? Uh, yes, they are required to pay the rates, I'm pretty sure, on that, yeah. Right, okay. So the other mm. councils are happy for us to receive that, yes. that money? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, it says in the paper, Mike, that um, there's a subdivision needing yep. to take place. I take it that the vendor has a larger parcel of land and will be subdividing off the campsite, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, so why under number seven... If the survey plan for the subdivision has not been deposited, the vendor may cancel the agreement. Surely that would be an option that we would want rather than the vendor. That is part of the sale and purchase agreement. So I presume that Hastings, when they entered into a conditional one, uh, agreement included that. I just seem Yeah, OK. Odd. But Hastings obviously entered into the, a conditional agreement, yeah. Um, or ha yeah, and that now needs to go unconditional as of tomorrow with either Hastings District Council or their nominee, and we would be their nominee as the owner. Okay, so there's, mm. a, there's another question I've got, and this is in relation to the buildings. Um, 9.2 says the vendor's given no warranty in relation mm. to the existing buildings and Hastings is going to do some inspections but it doesn't say Hastings is going to re reinstate or make them um, no. make them compliant. It also says in 10.6 that the lessee is required to display a copy of the current building warrant of fitness. Now if the lessee is in fact doing that then the buildings will be properly consented and warranted yeah. one would have thought. So do mm. we know whether the lessee is actually displaying that I have, or not. I have asked that question, and apparently um, the, the response off the top of my head from Hastings District Council that in actual fact a building warrant fitness is not actually legally required, and therefore there is not one displayed. So I'm not quite sure why the um, agreement does specify that as a requirement. Bit of a hole in the hole. Yeah, no, I know, I and, know. And yeah. if the buildings are found not to be properly warranted, um, yeah. who's got to get them? Who's got to have to fund getting them up to the required stand? That would fall on our heads. Um, 
it could fall, fall on our heads or it could fall on the leasee's head depending on the quantum of work or, the, or yeah, the, the issue that is there. However, um, I just based on their, their condition, which appears from, from the reports that I've received to be in, in pretty good nick, um, there may be some issues that need, need to be done to comply. Um, I want to get a survey of the, of the um, Holiday Park buildings to confirm or otherwise that. But given the fact that we have the income from the lease and an income for um, <coughs> effectively a depreciation fund, um, my proposal to Paul, and I haven't discussed it with him, would be that we would capitalise any significant um, investment in that and then utilise that lease money to, to pay the yeah, well, it, it just seems over to me it would be yeah. nice to be able to go into this with our eyes open and it might Yep. I mean, you've still got 24 hours, and it might be quite good to get like a Hastings building inspector or somebody right. to go out there and give us some information because it might be off-putting or I, it might be comforting. I have spoken to the Hastings building inspectors, and un unfortunately, they don't provide that sort of advice. So, <laughs> yeah. No, uh, Councillor Hewitt's next. Yeah. The, yeah, Councillor Hewitt. Mm. Three questions. Have you been out there, Mark? No, not. Not in the last. Uh, All right, four two questions. Years. Have any yeah. of our staff? Uh, Steve Cave has, yes. But R yeah. In, in regard to this sale and purchase? No, no. And ha right. I mean, he's not a qualified no, building no, no. inspector in terms of no. the building so, so, are we conducting our own due diligence? Due diligence? Or we we are, as much as we have been had time to do it, and that's that's the question I'm raising with you. I have not had time to actually do a full full due diligence since I have asked the question about uh, and been asked to take over that we take over the ownership so, right, so that that is of concern to me but I've I believe I've identified the key issues um, the two two areas that are of concern one is the wastewater and I believe that's resolved um, the second is these buildings and no I, I would need to go and and get a full survey done and um, satisfy ourselves of, of compliance or otherwise and have a program of work in place to, to deal with those. But I have not had time to do those, yeah. <laughs> I know, and that's, well, yeah. Hi. So that was my final question. Yeah. What are the risks to us taking yeah. on full ownership? So given that mm. you've answered that, mm. um, what do you require from us today in, in terms of you enabling you to complete this work? Do you need um, us to be instructing a delay? Or? No, I don't. I, don't I, I would do it anyway. Um, but you need to make your own assessment of the risks of per being the purchaser or going unconditional tomorrow. And, um, yeah, then, then doing sort of post-assessment surveys and coming up with a, a plan of work from there, if there is one. So, you know, that... <coughs> if. And just in terms of that, um, yes, there is a risk, um, but there would be um, where you need to make your own assessment, and my, be uh, my belief is make your own assessment. This is an opportunity for the public to own this facility in perpetuity. That's, um, it is unfortunate that we have been given virtually no time or insufficient time to, to work through all of these issues. However, um, the, the property itself, I would have thought, has significant value going forward to the broader public. And that's why I've sort of brought it forward and said, well, I can, I can see some risks, but you need to make your decision on the, on the sort of broad principle of whether or not to be the purchaser. Chair, I have a question for Paul. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I just, I just don't think you need to expand on this point. <clears throat> it seems to me that the discussion we've got to so far is around some of the technical day-by-day -day operational issues <clears throat> and uh, the focus of that is on that rather than what the original purpose for was for this was to uh, get hold of for the region this piece of land 
a strategic asset to have on our books <coughs> forever and ever as uh, an asset for Hawke's Bay. I think that's what it was. And is, wouldn't it be with that we just have to accept uh, the conditions, circumstances we've got here of the current lessee, the current camping ground, work our way through that until we get ourselves into a position where we can make decisions over for the next 20, 30, 50, 100 years for this piece of property. And we just have to deal with what we've got in front of us. Well, that, I don't think we've got any option but to do that. Yep, that's as mm. I see it. Mm. Just do it. Well, but Mr Chairman, you know, every uh, arrangement like this has the possibility, vendor may not agree, but uh, under the circumstances I'd be looking for a five day extension on settlement and getting a building assessor out there pronto and then get around to us by email and <coughs> tell us what the story is. Um, my question is for Paul. So um, if I understand this correctly, um, we're going to have title, and our name's going to be on the title. Yes. Um, um, two other parties are going to invest two thirds of the capital to buy it. Does it end up on our balance sheet as a full as uh, nine hundred thousand? Yes, yes, it would. It would. Um, it's, well, that, um, yeah. it's important before it's signed. I'm sure um, Mr. Adie's, um done this through the legal channels, but we would need a um, um, a letter of um, commitment to bind the two councils. We wouldn't want to find out that they, they 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 don't come to the party. I'm sure they will, but I mean everything's done legally nowadays, doesn't it? Um, also, I noticed that the the um, Vendor is able to cancel the agreement a couple of times in, in here. I would have thought that um, um, signing it conditional on um, a satisfactory building report of the improvements out there would, wouldn't have been um, untoward. I mean, it's basic residential property stuff, um, and Mr. Ady could get that done fairly quickly. Um, but there is a, if, if that wasn't agreed to, and I do notice here that if uh, structural alterations need to be done to the buildings for argument's sake. We, we find that the buildings are totally unsatisfactory. Um, if this is co correct here, Mr. Dady, you'll be able to back this up. Um, that it would appear as though if the work to be carried out exceeds 50,000, 50, so if we really had to do a lot of stuff, um, then we could cancel the lease if it was. Um, so I suppose you've got a 50,000 exposure if you get out there and find out that the buildings need major stuff done to them and it's over 50 grand, you're just out of it. So that's your backup. But it would be good to think that uh, a sense, uh, the contract could be sensible in that it's conditional to us being satisfied of the, uh, of the of condition of the buildings. Chair, can I, can I make a suggestion? Um, could we perhaps cover off on the issue that's concerning us here by adding some words to the uh, recommendation 3.1, which is finalise the sale and purchase agreement for the land and the holiday park, by adding the words subject to, subject to carrying out a suitable inspection of the site and buildings. Can I, can I just, Ray, I mean that may not be acceptable to the vendor, in which case, what do we do then? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I probably need the options available to me in conjunction with um, Liz to work through this minimising the risk as best we can, but we've, we've obviously got a date tomorrow and we have a vendor with a sale and purchase agreement. Yes, if I can get an extension to four, four five days to enable us to do the, the assessment, that's fine, but I mean, they may not agree to that and I, I have no feel for that. C can well, I ask another question? It, it's only worthwhile doing, is it not, if you are prepared to say no. And it seems to me that we've, this council, Hastings District and Napier, for the first time in a long time, have agreed to go and do something for together for themselves, gone through all their plans, have agreed to buy this and invest in this property as an investment for the future for Hawke's Bay to save a, a, a significant piece of coastal resource for people to camp on. The buildings, in my opinion, are immaterial. And if we're not going to say no, well, you just have to do it. Councillor Grant. Oh, there's another point I to that too. It's, um, three people aren't investing. In fact, two of them are investing in us to go to buy this, and we end up with their money. I, I think that's it's a pretty good deal. I've, I, we stay at the, those camping, so I do know, unlike Councillor Dick, mm. um, I stay there, and they are, this is a 1960, these are old buildings, 
It's a 1960s camping ground, and um, it's really lovely to stay there. But um, you know, it's not this. This is not something anything flash. Um, so a building inspector would find a whole lot of fault. Now, I just don't think that it's, it's the issue. The issue will be the contingency risk with the lease with the guy who leases it that we have to do things to those buildings. So I just ask you to look at that, but otherwise we're in. Uh, my interpretation is right, that's limited to 50,000, so, yeah, which is very, very useful. So it means, we, it means we don't, under the lease, it means we don't have to completely rebuild the, the buildings uh, to... Uh, so we're limited to 50 grand. Well, that's what it says here anyway. That's what have it says. we inherited uh, a sale and purchase agreement prepared by Hastings District? Uh, yes, or their legal advisors anyway, yes. Mm. Just, just a, well, I just, just stuck with no, it. No, so. yeah, I've just got a small question. Uh, Hastings District, like, this has gone on for years. Yeah, yeah. They, they've done their due diligence. They, is there any report that's come with this that they have looked at the, um, the ground, my understanding? They've looked at the sewerage, looked at the water supply. Um, they've looked at the water supply, um, which is, is in good... Nick, there's, there's recent um, um, testing results, it's carried out annually and that all passes um, the public health side of things. Um, the wastewater has had a due diligence um, done on it, the buildings don't. So, yeah. They didn't do the buildings, that's fine. No. Okay. Councillor Barker. Just to, to, as a, a pre I have been out to this camping ground on a number of occasions without out there regularly last summer for a swim. I haven't been to this camp there, but I know the re place reasonably well. And that's why I'm really keen on because it's a fabul fabulous public facility. And I would have thought we should approach this not as if we're going to buy a house to move in to live in it. We're approaching this to buy it as an asset for the community over a longer time. And we should look at it as we would look at any park. Any park, any recreational area, this is an investment for recreation for our people. And as we should look at that light rather than worry about them. I don't, I don't entirely agree with uh, Councillor Barker, but what I had forgotten was that in fact any uh, liability that we may, may end up inheriting here is in fact limited to $50,000 in the lease agreement. I'm, I'm actually comfortable on that basis to leave the discretion to the staff to get on with it. Councillor Hewitt. Oh, sorry, so, um, can you outline the liability for the health and safety obligations that we could be exposed to? Um, it's not our place of work. Um, we have public liability insurance. The leasee um, da is aware of their responsibilities. We will get that checked, but I would think that the links with regard to health and safety back to HBRC are very low risk, if, if at all. Happy to move. I'm just going to ask for a mover. Seconder. Did you have a question, Councillor Scott? No. Seconder. Uh, you wish to speak? I do wish uh, to speak. Um, as I said, my family, um, every year, I think every Christmas, they uh, go off to this camping ground. Sometimes I'm with them, sometimes I'm too busy at council meetings and can't go. Um, and it's, and uh, you know, but, <laughs> but essentially um, we're doing a land banking um, exercise. Um, and it's a marvellous deal for us uh, because we have two other parties giving us the money, uh, uh, two-thirds of the money, and then it w goes on to our balance sheet, and it's a good price. Uh, of course, the lease doesn't reflect anything that's not an investment. Um, it's 1% return on the investment or something like that, 2%. So um, it's a terrible investment, but it's an investment for the future of the people of Hawke's Bay, and it's a wonderful thing that all the councils have got together and um, divvied in to make this happen. And we've got to make it happen, and I'm really happy to delegate Mr Aidy, except I'd say one thing to you. Um, I'm a little bit um, amazed that we haven't sent our staff out there to have a look, and I would suggest that if you were buying a, a, a house for yourself and your wife, you would have had a, a really good look. Um, so uh, it's too late now. We've just got to, we all know the piece of land, the buildings on it are really old, and we've just got to get on with it and do this. Mr. Speak. I'm with Councillor Barker on this one. I think that um, we've got an opportunity here, and I think we need to take it. It's uh, we either lose that part, part of the, uh, that resource, that 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 area of coastal um, land that has been traditionally used by families here in Hawke's Bay 
um, as a camping ground for, for, for many, many years. Uh, and I don't think we, those sort of camping grounds are, are becoming quite rare throughout New Zealand. And uh, so I think this is the opportunity we need to take, take that opportunity and, and, and purchase it for future generations. Other speakers? Uh, so by the council taking it over, it becomes a crown entity which could liable to a treaty claim. <laughs> <laughs> Make a good place for you and I to retire out there. Nice, nice, uh, twist, nice twist there, Mr. Moy. Order, um, Councillor Scott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I will speak in favour of the motion. Quite some time ago, and before this particular council, uh, we undertook a gaps analysis of our open spaces, and one of the gaps that was identified was access to uh, camping in a coastal area around Hawkes Bay. Given the number of, pri of sites that were being closed down and the public being very limited in where they could camp in the coastal, our coastal areas, this um, fills one of those gaps. So it really looked at uh, where we were seeking. It's a good investment. It's being made by uh, three councils that have the most interest in that Napier and Hastings are the closest populations to use that. I certainly would um, support, and I do agree with the previous speakers of um, Councillor Barker and Pipe, that this is about the opportunity. It's not really about those last last pieces. We're investing for the future in this to guarantee that that access stays in public hands. And I think that that's what we need to focus on, however disappointing it is not having the last um, I's dotted and T's crossed. I would, however, say that when we do enter a lease, that we're quite clear that it is remains every site remains open to the public, because this is what it's about. Everyone having public access, not a few privileged individuals excluding anyone from using that site. So, uh, I think that we can go forward fairly confidently at this and uh, it, look at it as an investment for the future. Thank you. Other speakers. Received your right, yeah, I'll, Barker, I'll yeah. exercise my right. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. It's very good. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Can I just uh, uh, make the first point about this? Is that <clears throat> the thing which I'm really keen on this is this, it's very hard to get all of the councils in uh, Hawke's Bay to agree and do something together. This is one thing we have done quite quickly, quite easily, and remarkably, as Councillor Graham has pointed out. The other two councils have put their investment into the name of the Hbrick as the sole owner. And we've all got relationships, as you see in this, where people are going to undertake and do other things. And I think we should do everything to make sure we get make this a success and hopefully it's signals other things will do in the future as well. Buying a camping ground is always going to be problematic and I think we just have to look past that uh, uh, and look at what we've got. And Councillor Scott's hit the nail and pipe on the, hit the nails on the head exactly. It's an investment in camping outdoor space for future generations to come. Yes, there will be some problems, but this is an investment for the future. And uh, if we don't take this opportunity now, it will never come again. These places are diminishing by the year rapidly. And that threat here is the old-fashioned Kiwi camping holiday. Uh, we're making an investment here to make sure the Kiwi camping holiday is a reality in our region, and I welcome that. Just for clarity, Mr Chair, I mean, this isn't being transferred to Hbrick as an investment, is it? No, the intention is HBRC. Oh, I just, just want to make sure. <laughs> HBRC, <right>. very... <laughs> Keep up, Councillor Barker. Uh, any other speakers? Councillor Hewitt. Thank you. This is... I mean, okay, some people see this as an opportunity. I'm really concerned. This is the third agenda item today where it has come to the table with insufficient information. And I don't actually think it's good enough. I think that we should have had this nailed before it came to us. There's, there's information that we require to have this signed off. And I'd like to think between now and when you do settle that, um, that the staff will be <coughs> satisfying themselves that they have that information. I also agree with Councillor Scott that I don't think it should be just a select group of privileged individuals who get to um, go into the camping ground every year. I think it should be most definitely open to the public and the widest public public good. But um, I, I'll be abstaining from this. I'm not comfortable with the amount of information I've received today. Sum up. No. Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. And against? Carried. 
and you abstain. Okay. Right, let's break for lunch. Just remind the gallery that lunch is for councillors, uh, Mr Moorhey and staff alone, and uh, we'll be back at one o'clock. Thank you.